But we do want to remember, just remember people in prayer. Amen. Would you please open your Bibles with me uh, to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. Tomorrow our country will celebrate Veterans Day. You see, the day is set apart especially to honor all our men and women who have served our country in the military. The truth is that our veterans deserve more than just a day of appreciation. They deserve our continuous respect and honor and our gratitude. Our scripture this morning is the last words that the Apostle Paul will write. These were letters that were written to uh, Timothy. It's interesting because Timothy, Paul considers Timothy a beloved son and a true son. And so these words are very personal. They're, they're very precious that he will write. Our scripture is 1 Timothy chapter 6, starting with verse 11. 1 Timothy chapter 6, starting with verse 11, it says, But you, O man of God, Flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep this commandment without spot, blameless, until our Lord Jesus Christ's appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potent, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O oh, Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge, by professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. What does it mean to fight the good fight of faith? What does it mean to fight the good fight of faith? This first letter that Paul wrote to Timothy is dated around 64 A.D. Paul is in prison, but he hopes to come to Timothy, and we see that in chapter 3, verse 14, where he says, These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. And so even though Paul is in prison, there's still this, this uh, sense of hope and expectation that he's going to get out and he's going to come to Timothy and, and tell him these things personally, but until then, he's writing him this letter. The second letter to Timothy is dated closer to the death of the Apostle Paul, somewhere around 67 A.D. And in this letter, Paul is pleading with Timothy to come see him. We see this in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 9. Be diligent to come to me quickly. So there's a big difference between 1 Timothy where Paul is in prison and he believes he's, he's hopefully he's expecting to be able to get out and go to Timothy. And then in 2 Timothy, he's still in prison, but now it's, it's past that. And now his desire is for Timothy to come to him and to come to him quickly. And so it's very, it's very interesting, the difference between 1 Timothy and 2 
Timothy. But I want you to hear the words that um, led up to the Apostle Paul begging Timothy to come to him quickly. Listen to these words. It's 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 through 8. This is what would lead Paul to say, Timothy, come to me quickly. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 through 8. The Apostle Paul says, For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearance. So what exactly is fight the good fight? What does that mean, fight the good fight of faith? The Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and through 12. The Apostle Paul tells us, That be strong, finally be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. You see, we celebrate Veterans Day because not everyone serves in the military. Not everyone serves in the military, and those that have served, well, they deserve our appreciation. They deserve our gratitude because they were willing to put themselves in harm's way to guarantee our, our freedom. They deserve our appreciation. But in the spiritual realm, we're all part of the battle. Now, I want you all to think about that. You see, when we're talking about the spiritual realm, all of us are part of this battle. And if you're a Christian, then your faith will be tested on a daily basis. Daily basis. The Apostle Paul is that veteran who has gone through the very depths of war, and he is passing down some encouraging words to Timothy, his son in the faith. To fight the good fight of faith, it means to finish the race. It means don't quit. Don't stop. Don't quit. Don't stop. Don't give up. Fight the good fight. You see, the devil will try and get you to quit the race. It appears that um, the Apostle Paul warns Timothy of three temptations that the devil will try and and used to get us to, to give up and to quit this race, this fight, this battle that we are in. You see, the first temptation is the attractions of this world. The devil is going to throw a lot of worldly things at you to tempt you to quit. It appears that one of the biggest worldly temptations, worldly attractions, is this thing called Money. First uh, Timothy chapter six, six through ten says, "Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptations and a snare, and into many false and harmful lusts." which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. But listen to this part. For which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You see, the devil was going to throw this temptation at you, this temptation of, of wealth, this temptation of money, this temptation of greed, because his desire is to get you off the race. 
to get you out of the race, to get you out of the fight. But the Apostle Paul tells Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Another worldly attraction is listening to gossipers. Uh oh. <laughs> listening to gossipers. Uh, Again, it's 1 Timothy chapter 6. It's the very last part that we read this morning, verse 20 and 21. He says, O Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. But he says it again, listen to this. By professing it, some have strayed. They've gotten off the racetrack. They've, they've quit the fight. They've strayed. From the faith. Think about that. The devil will throw this temptation out to try and get you to, to listen to those things that are, that are part of the world. They've strayed from the faith because of money. They have strayed from the faith because they were listening to the world instead of listening to God's word. Interestingly though, this is at the beginning of the race. This is at the beginning of the fight. This is only round one of our fight. This temptation is most effective on new believers. New believers. They see the, the desires of this world and they have no roots. And they'll fall away really quick. But let's look at temptation number two. Temptation number two is persecution and hardship. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, the apostle Paul tells Timothy, you therefore must endure hardships as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. You see, the Apostle Paul is evidence of this. And he's telling Timothy, listen, you must endure hardship as a good soldier. Because it's Jesus Christ who has enlisted you in this army, in this battle in which you are in. Listen to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 12 through 15. He says, yes, and all who desire all who desire, every one of you who desires to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. You see, the Apostle Paul is, is telling Timothy that, that you're going to go through some persecution. You're going to go through some hard times. You're going to go through some difficult, difficult times. You see, this kind of temptation is very effective. Because most people have this misunderstanding of the Christian life. You see, they think the Christian life is this casual stroll with Jesus through the park. When the truth is, you're in a fight. You're in a fight. The truth is, Jesus is walking us through the valley of the shadow of death. The devil hopes that you'll give up this fight. As soon as you get punched in the face by persecution, by temptation, by hard trials of all kinds, he's hoping that you'll just give up. He's hoping that you'll quit. But when Paul says, fight the good fight of faith, it's important to remember, you're in a fight. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't stop. Keep going. This third temptation. The third temptation is you feel alone. You feel all alone. In 2 Timothy 4, 16 through 18, these are the, 
Essentially, these are the very last words of the Apostle Paul. And here's what he says. He says, at my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. You see, this kind of temptation is most effective against those who are almost at the end of the race. You see, they've worked so hard. And this temptation is so hard because the devil knows that they are so close to the finish line. The devil knows they're just, they're just right around the corner from completing the fight. This is the 10th round of the battle. You see, at the end of his life, the Apostle Paul looked around and he noticed that everyone had abandoned him. Everyone had abandoned him. It's a big difference than 1 Timothy when he writes to, to young Timothy and saying, you know what, I, I hope to come to you quickly. But now... He looks around and they're all gone. So what does he say? Timothy, I've already been poured out. I've finished the race. I've, I'm, I'm done, but you need to come to me quickly. You need to come to me quickly. Why? Because everybody else has already left him. He feels abandoned. He feels all alone. Except for the good news is that he wasn't alone. Jesus was with him. God was with him. And that's encouraging but you know, not everybody who is at the end of their journey has that same view as the Apostle Paul does. Not all of them do. You see, some of them will look around and they'll like, well, where is everybody? Where is everybody? And sometimes it, it could appear that you're, you're all alone. You know what one of the saddest stories of veterans is in our country? I'll have, I'll have Ruth that she'll come. It's one of the saddest stories that our country has as, as opposed to veterans. And it's these veterans who came home deserving respect and appreciation for their service. But for the most part, they were rejected. You see, it's the veterans who, who fought in Vietnam, a very unpopular war at the time. And while they were out on the, the battlefield, well, they had their brothers in arms. But when they came home, for the most part, they were rejected. They were looked down upon, weren't appreciated, weren't loved. You see, they felt all alone. And probably the veterans that are still alive today, um, Probably most of them are from the Vietnam era. So tomorrow, make sure that you, you let a veteran know that you appreciate their service. Let them know that you, you have a, a deep amount of gratitude for what they've done in order to keep our country safe. But in the spiritual battle, we're all soldiers. We're all part of this fight. I think 1973, some of those who were for around back then, Lanny Wolf, he wrote a, wrote a song. He says, uh, when I first heard of Jesus, His love and His grace, my heart was overwhelmed to think a king would take my place. I cried, Lord, I'll go with you every step of the way. That's all I can do. My debt to repay. I love him too much to fail him now. 
too much to break my vow. I promised the Lord that I'd make it somehow. And now I love Him too much to fail Him now. I told Him I loved Him. Well, it was easy to say, but harder to prove when temptations came my way. What good are broken promises? I counted them but loss when I caught a glimpse of true love hanging on a rugged cross. Oh, the years have brought me closer. My love for Jesus has grown. Each step draws me nearer to my eternal home. And I'm too close to heaven to turn back now. His grace will be sufficient. I'm going to make it somehow. I love Him too much to fail Him now. Too much to break my vow. I promised the Lord that I'd make it somehow. And now I love Him too much to fail Him now. You see, regardless of where you are in the race, regardless of what round you are in this battle that you are facing today, and the truth is, (laughs) you'll know where you are spiritually by the temptations that you're facing. I told you that first temptation is most effective to those that are just beginning the race. Their, Their eyes are so close to the things of this world. And it's easy for them to just get off the track. It's easy for them to to take that first punch from the devil and to just quit and to give up. And then there's those that, boy, you've worked hard. You've been a Christian for a while, but man, you're going through some real tough persecution and hardship. The story of Job tells it true. Skin for skin. Let me lay my hands on him and surely he'll curse you to your face. Well, hardship, persecution, troubles of many kinds, will, will they cause us to quit the race? For those that run the marathon, it's called hitting the wall and you just don't think you can go on any further. And maybe that's where you're at in this fight. Maybe that's where you're at in this this race. The one I'm most concerned about are those at the end. Because I'm sure that there's those that that have been in a church a long time, and they look around, and they're like, well, where's everybody at? Some have died off. Some moved away. 